What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. With me is Nicole. You may or may not have seen her from the personal vlogs. Ethan Yao, shout out to that. Posting a personal vlog there every single Tuesday if you care about it, non-poker stuff. Anyways, we're headed to the win right now. She's in for uh, a poker session. She's gonna rail, rail us and uh, see how it goes. So we got like a little bit of a support team here. Anyways, on the two five list, I don't think we're gonna play five, 10, 20. A little too high for us for now at least. But two fives are shooting as well. Let's try to run it up. Let's get into the hands with her in the background. Let's go. Once again, back here at the 2-5 at the win here. Just absolutely love the deep stacked structure. And one of the first hands, ace-queen off suit in early position. I put in a raise to $20, folds around to the small blind player who makes the call. This is someone I'm pretty familiar with. Surprising to see him as he plays around the New Hampshire scene we've battled a few times here and there. Anyways, heads up, the flop comes queen, three, deuce, two clubs. This player puts in a lead, leads out for $30, and it seems like a really weird spot for us. We're sitting here with top top and with the queen of clubs, it blocks some flush draws. Definitely can raise at some frequency, but I decided to just make the call in flat. We're off to see a turn. When the turn is the five of spades, he throws out another bet this time to $60. This seems like the real decision point of the hand. Um, definitely not folding here, obviously, with top pair, top kicker, along with a gut shot straight draw. So calling here definitely is in play. It means I have a very under-repped hand with top top and can let bluffs barrel again on the river. But raising here feels like a decent option as well as I can get draws to make the call, get more value from hands that have good equity. But after weighing my options, I decided on just a call as I'm behind some sets and stuff. So we're off to see a river, which is the seven of diamonds. This isn't really a car that I'm too concerned with. I'm not folding to any bet now. He throws out a bet of $150. And I tell him if he has a set, he's good, but I'm not gonna be folding this one. I make the call. He shows us the ace of clubs. Looks like he had the nut flush draw and we're going to take this one down. So at least we still got a triple barrel bluff on the river here against ace high, but I think raising on the turn could have netted us more money. In the following spot, we pick up ace nine of hearts in the cutoff. There's an unigun open to $20 here with the suited ace, we're in position. I make the call, the button actually comes along as well. So we're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes 873 to clubs, and we don't really have a whole lot here on this board, but when the unigun -un player checks, surprisingly, I'm gonna check this one with ace high, button checks it back. Going to see a free turn, which is the 10 of spades. We've improved to an open-ended straight draw, and the unigun -un player throws out a delayed continuation bet of 40. We're open-ended, definitely not going to be folding with our draw, along with an ace for an over. I also think that this is a pretty good board to bluff on too, depending on what the button does. So I make the call and the button comes along as well. I can't imagine this button player is too strong over calling after checking the flop. So we're going three ways still to a river, which is the eight of hearts brick city for us. But this unknown player throws out another bet of $75. Considering we unblock all of the club draws that he may or may not be holding, we also block some straights and some eight, nine combinations in our hand. So I think raising here could make a lot of sense. We put a lot of pressure on some top pair holdings, one pair holdings, or even just fold out bluffs that he could be doing this with like ace king or ace queen that beats us. So we decided to go for it, ambitious, but we put in the raise and raise it up to $300 action onto the button who thinks about it for a while and ends up reluctantly folding but this unknown player makes the call relatively quickly so not good for us we show ace high proudly and he shows pocket queens so oops might have ran into this one a little too ambitious to raise and try to fold that over pairs that was never going to get through unfortunate for us here 
Guys, this video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. With over 30 million downloads, 10 years of VPN expertise, and 100% open source software, they are the world's most transparent VPN provider. With the landscape of cyber hackers and poker online, internet security and anonymity is key and there's no better option. Because Private Internet Access changes your IP address and reroutes your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, it hides your online activity from your internet service provider network administrator, and government sensors. Private internet access is the most customizable VPN on the market, allowing you to make your own VPN experience truly your own. They work with all major streaming services so you have unrestricted access to your favorite content anywhere in the world. Plus, it's one of the few VPNs that fully supports P2P file sharing and torrenting. Their VPN is 100% open source and the code is public so anyone can take a look under the hood and examine just how secure and private the service really is. Almost no other VPN is this transparent. Signing up is risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee and easy to access. Use my link in the description below to get complete digital privacy for less than $3 a month and you get two extra months for free. This means it's only $2.08 a month and 83% off. Use my link below and thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Trying to redeem ourselves from that little punt there with the Ace-9, we pick up Pocket Aces on the button. That is a great sight to see. Even better, there's an early position open to 20, and the cutoff makes the call. We are sizing it up. 20 is not going to be big enough for our Pocket Aces. I 3-bet to $80. We get one player to make the call, the early position player who opened. This is the same player from hand at number one. And also, the cutoff comes along as well. So we've got three ways to a flop. We've got action here. The flop comes king, jack, deuce, rainbow. Once again, this early position player leads into us for $75. The cutoff folds and facing another lead from him again. He did this with the draw the first time. And I'm thinking that he might do this again with a good holding potentially. Not sure at this point, but for $75, a little bit suspicious of what he could be holding. I just make the call, not going to raise just yet. We're off to see a turn. When the turn comes, the seven of spades, he bets out once again, almost like the same old story from hand number one. He bets out $150, but good thing for us, our hand is a lot better than the first one. So a little bit of a decision point. I didn't raise last time with ace queen. So I think this time I'm gonna go for it and put in a raise on this turn. And I size up to $500. Upon my raise, he snap jams. Didn't even think about it. Three bet rips it. And it's a total of $969. So it's only 469 more. With our over pair, I'm not super comfortable with it but I can't fold now given the money that we've committed. I just make the call, hoping that one pair is good. And when I call, he says that he's gambling. So it sounds like he might have queen 10. I announce my aces and we're off to see a river all in in this pretty big pot here at two five. The river is an eight. If he said he's gambling and drawing, this eight shouldn't complete much. He shows us queen 10 as expected and we're gonna scoop a big pot our way. Always nice to push some chips our direction. So wrapping up the quick session, we are actually going to Zion National Park. Going there tomorrow, had to wrap up the session relatively quickly. Only played for about two or three hours. Um, game was not as crazy as you guys have seen it in the past. So we only played for two, three hours. Got a few hands in, obviously. The vlog will not end here. Gonna get more hands in a future session. But to wrap up this one, we were in for 2,500, out for 3,510. No complaints here, walking away with a pretty solid profit in not that much time. Got lucky with the ace's hand, but you'll see some footage from Zion and maybe we'll mix in some more hands the next time we play, maybe in a day or two. So keep you guys updated. See you in like 10 seconds. So we actually didn't go to Zion the very next day. What we ended up doing was a double date night with our buddy Justin and Mary. We ended up going to a dinner at Carbone. 
followed by a helicopter ride over the Strip of Vegas, which was a beautiful sight to see. Then after that, capped the night off with some bowling. All of this was captured on my personal vlog, Ethan Yao posted it a little bit ago, but I do post on that vlog channel once a week, every single Tuesday. It's all non-poker related stuff. So if you're interested in checking out that channel, I wanna watch some non-poker content from me, click over there, subscribe on the road to 10,000 subscribers. That'd be really cool if you wanna support the channel there because I'm posting a lot of content consistently. So check it out, hopefully you enjoy it. After the double date festivities were over, the very next day, we ended up going to Resorts World and play the 2-5 max buy-in of $1,200. Let's get into the hands. One of the first interesting hands with Ace-10 of Diamonds and plus one, there's an onion player who limps and definitely gonna put in a raise, so a size to $25. There's a cutoff who makes the call, then onto the button player who three bets to 100. Action folds to me. She's got about $1,500 in her stack, so I'm gonna make the call here, defend out of position, and the cutoff ends up folding. Going to a flop out of position, flop comes eight, eight, four, rainbow. I check here on this paired board, and she puts in a down bet of $65. We've got ace high, we've got two overs, backdoor diamond draws, and let's just float. Sometimes ace high can be good. She can be c-betting her entire range here, so I make the call. Going to a turn, which is the lovely nine of diamonds. Brings in that backdoor flush draw, and I'm gonna check to play and flow once again. Now she sizes up to $275. Definitely the decision points of this hand facing a large turn bet. I think we can size up with a check raise given that this card's really good for us. We have some river cards that we can potentially bluff on as we have a 10 in hand to rep some straights, or we can just make the call. Also, as you know, folding seems like a very fine option given the bad price to continue, but as you know, that is a little boring. So I decided on making the call and we're going to a river. Dicey situation here firsthand with this second session. The river is the 10 of clubs. We improve to top pair, but we're certainly not confident that our hand is good. We think that this opponent is now just only repping over pairs given the action. And do we think our opponent is capable of folding an over pair if we bet $600 or higher? I'm not 100% sure. I think she can find a fold with a hand like pocket jacks or maybe even queens, but it's a little bit ambitious to pray for opponents to fold over pairs in live poker. We know that people are really prone to just calling when you have aces or kings as they're hard to fold. Also to go along with that, we do beat some hands like king, queen of diamonds or something like that. So I think about it and I think it's an ambitious bet to try to turn our hand into a bluff now, but I just check, she snap checks it back and shows pocket jacks. So with all of that talk, she ended up having that one hand that we might have been able to fold out. So nice hand, June, definitely missed out on the bluff there on the river, but nice hand. Also, she later tells me that she watches the channel, so thanks for watching it. Here's the hand where I donated some money to you. In the next spot, trying to redeem ourselves from the first hand misplay, we've got pocket queens mm. on the button. There's an onion gun open to $15, then a low jack, three bet to 45. Then the cutoff makes the call for 45. So we're playing pretty deep here. Definitely gonna put in a four bet. We're in position with pocket queens and a premium. So I size up to $175. The underground player who opened preflop gets out of the way with his 15 bucks and only the low jack and cutoff call. So we're going three ways to a flop in position. The flop is not the best looking one. It's ace 10 four, two clubs, action checks to me. We are able to bet our range here, but considering we're multi-way, I probably don't think that's the best idea. But as you know, we're stuck. We're gonna put money in the middle. I see bet my range to $175. Immediately, the low jack makes the call, so we don't love that. So we're kind of done and over with this hand. And we're certainly over it when the cutoff rips his whole stack in there. It's about $1,400 in stack. He covers me and the low jack covers everyone. So yeah, facing this action, I am so out of here. I fold and the low jack snap calls. Snippity snap, we at least get to see a run out in this big pot that we are part of.
the runout comes and the low jack ends up winning with ace king rough start for us but nice to see a lot of action on this t5 table would love to start having better runouts and chips pushed our way though two deals and two hands later we pick up ace jack of clubs in the hijack there is an only gun player who limps as a plus one raise to twenty dollars Amping up the aggression, you know we're not flat calling. I put in the three bets to 60, and only the plus one player defends. Going to a flop of queen, queen, eight, two spades on this paired board with ace, jack, high. He checks to me, and I put in a bet of 40. For $40, he makes the call. Off to a turn, which is a six. Inconsequential, doesn't really help us out too much. He checks to me, and I'm just going to decide to just check this one back. Ace-Jack high could sometimes be good. Let's just realize our equity and see what happens. The river is another board pairing eight, so double paired board now, and he decides to put out a bet of $130. A <sighs> little bit of a frustrating start in this second session. I think we're going to fold and get out of the way with ace-high here. So I let my cards go, and this player wins another big pot. His seat seems to be in a pretty good spot right now. The first three hands didn't go away, but we're definitely going to redeem ourselves this time. We've got pocket queens once again. Don't fail me now. We're in the big blind, and there are three limpers to me. We're out of position on an action-heavy table. I'm going to size up a little bit larger to $40. Well, the only one player snap calls my 40. Seems like he's playing any two cards. And now the plus one rips her entire stack in there for $219 total. Did I tell you that we were on an action heavy table? This is definitely fun to see looking at pocket queens. So when action folds to me, I'm obviously not going to go anywhere. And I think the right play is to just make the call, hoping to incentivize this underground player who has been playing literally any two cards to potentially come in. Although we're out of position against them, it's not amazing, but it's a sacrifice we're willing to make for a bigger pot. So I just make the call, smooth call the 219 total jam. The Enneagram player thinks for a while. He ends up saying out loud that he really wants the call, but ultimately does fall, so it seems like he was holding some weak cards. We're off to a run out, heads up. The flop comes, ace, king, high. Couldn't have asked for a worse flop for pocket queens. She shows us the ace, queen. We do not improve here. We couldn't hit that one outer. Certainly not the spot we're looking for. Pocket queens goes down in flames once again. For one of the last notable hands of this Resorts World session, picking up 6-7 of hearts and plus 2, there is a plus 1 open to $15. I've seen this player raise it up from early position with hands like Jack-7, so I'm going to be 3-betting him relentlessly here in position, so I size up to $50. The cutoff makes the call, plus 1 makes the call, so 3-bet's not getting through. Like I said, action-heavy table, I'm happy to see some flops. Three ways, the flop comes pretty good. Seven, five, three, two spades and a heart. All things considered, good flop for us with top pair. We have a gutter to a straight. So when action checks to me, I'm going to size to $50 for a bet. Only the plus one player to my right. He makes the call. The turn is the three of clubs. Feeling eh about this card. He checks to me and all things considered, I think this card's going to help him more often than me. So... I'm going to play this like a lot of my other holdings would. I'm going to check back. When the river comes, the six of diamonds, I think now here in position, the plan is to simply bluff catch if he bets and just check this one back with our pair of sevens. So hoping he fires out a barrel, but sadly he does check this one. I check it back with my pair of sevens, thinking we have good enough showdown. And he says he missed. He shows us six deuce. So yeah. We're going to take this one down, like I said. If he's going to open six deuce from plus one, he's going to open fairly wide. So uh, wrapping up the session here at Resorts World, safe to say we weren't playing at a 100% A-game level. I don't know what it was, um, just really played pretty bad um, in this Resorts World session. So uh, only played for like an hour or two and um, ended up being in the game for 2,500, out of the game for 1,351. So not a pretty session, but all things considered, given how well we've run in the past, a little bit of regression is totally fine. Um, we'll take it. Did run a little bit bad with the queens, and that ace-10 hand was just totally butchered, unfortunately. 
So um, anyways, onwards to the next session. We'll regroup next time, but hopefully you enjoyed this one. Leave a like if you made it this far at the very end. It's always much appreciated that you guys watch the end. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, all that fun YouTube stuff. But um, yeah, gonna wrap up this video. Going to play, probably gonna play at the win again. I don't know, something about there with the action. It's just always pretty solid, but thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.